Hello everyone, I'm Corey from Aquarium Co-op and today I'm going to give you five viable ideas for your 29 or 30 gallon aquarium. It's kind of a series we do. We've done lots on 10 gallons and 55 gallons and 20 gallons and now it's time to talk about that, that 29 to 30 gallon. Very common popular size. It's the first size that you can start doing bigger fish or truly getting some, I don't want to call them biotopes, but like some real uh, different levels of fish going on. The first one I've got is I call it a timeless classic, and that is epistogrammas, cardinal tetras, and hatchet fish. Now, traditionally, this goes in kind of a softer water planted aquarium. You pick out your epistogrammas that are usually a male-female pair. Your hopeful the goal is to breed them in there, and they're nice and colorful. There's some dwarf cichlids, and they like pH, you know, maybe six eight to seven four or so. And then you, you also have some cardinal tetras, so you get that nice visual color going back and forth. It'll make the, the cichlids feel more comfortable and ready to spawn and that kind of stuff. And then, so you're not void of stuff up top, you put the hatchet fish, and they hang out right at the top there. And uh, what's nice about this is it's visually very pleasing. So you get to see all these different types of fish. You feed fish at the top, they eat, it goes down, the neon tetras eat, or the cardinal tetras eat, and then the epistos eat. And that works out pretty nice to lead to a nice, healthy, clean aquarium. And they all tolerate the warmer temperatures because epistos like to be 80, 82, a little bit warmer than your average tropical fish. Same with the cardinals and the uh, hatchet fish will uh, tolerate that as well. So you get that nice visual going on. And then if you're lucky, someday you get some fry coming out of the epistos. And you've got enough bottom space so that you could have a couple of pairs going after they breed. And you've got that height of that 30-gallon uh, to get the separation between them so it's not just usually when you have two schools they kind of start schooling together and it doesn't look that cool but with the separation it allows you to get that and I feel like at the the 29 level uh, or 30 gallon level you can start to do that so the next thing I've got for you uh, kind of another breeding project if you will because I, I really enjoy that myself not everyone does but if you were looking for something a nice pair of angelfish just a nice pair and you could get a breeding slate or a nice Amazon sword, something for them to lay the eggs on. And as long as you don't put snails and, and placostomus and catfish in there, for the most part, angels are pretty good parents. And so they're going to raise those babies up a lot of times. They might eat the first few spawns, but over time they'll learn to become better parents. And you might get to raise a few little baby angels and give them to friends or back to the pet store. And that's a very fun and rewarding experience for yourself or your family. Uh, I recommend everyone do it once you know just to see like wow there's so many babies and most of them got eaten but some made it and I call that one lucky and that's how that kind of gets started and then maybe you have two aquariums and, and fun stuff like that so it's a real uh, hobby opener if you will because you've just got the male female pair uh, it's not too much of a load on that aquarium they're big fish for that size of an aquarium but uh, people are usually drawn to those big fish and they're very tolerant of wide water parameters and not picky when it comes to what type of filtration or what type of food or anything like that. So they just make a great option, although it might look a little barren, but if you got that 29 gallon over in the corner and you want to experiment or it's fully planted and you want to put just a pair of angels in there to keep your life simple, it can make a lot of sense. Next up, I've got uh, an unheated aquarium. So maybe you've got it in an office building or maybe it's in your living room and we don't heat that room or maybe it's downstairs in a basement and you don't want to fight the temperatures all the time. I recommend long fin rosy barbs. Now rosy barbs are known or barbs are known to be aggressive. These guys aren't very aggressive. They're really laid back. They're kind of actually great algae eaters. But with that long fin, it slows them down even a bit more and they look just really, really nice with that nice uh, like red color and then the females kind of have the gold color to them and they're going to be these big kind of three and a half four inch fish with these huge fins that will look great uh, swimming back and forth in a school now you'll probably want to get four to six of those because um, they're going to grow in and then I pair them with some Corydoras and the Corydoras I pair them with are typically um, maybe like a long fin or just even a normal fin Paleatus also kind of known as a salt and pepper Corydora because they can go with cooler temperatures as well. You could sub those out for a rarer corridor like the Barbatus Corys, but you might be paying upwards of $20 to $30 per of those, and you want to school them as well. So the Paleatus are much more accessible. And then, of course, fill it in with plants. They're great algae eaters, and plants actually prefer cooler temperatures than hotter temperatures. They tend to thrive. 
and it really comes together as a nice showpiece wherever you're going to put it. Next up, I have a traditional one that I don't partake in, but I recognize this is the size of tank I would probably do it in, and that is Glowfish, specifically like the Glow Tetras, the Glow uh, Barbs, some of the bigger stuff in there. You can get these schools of 6 to 10. There's lots of color. And then I think it's about the first size that makes sense to start introducing like a Glow Shark because they're pretty territorial. And at the 29 to 30 gallon level, you've got a little bit more territory. They can separate a little bit. Those fish are going to get kind of two and a half, three inches or so. They're voracious when they eat. Now, they don't really, they're not very susceptible to different water uh, parameters. Like they, they run the gamut, but I do believe, my own personal opinion, the fish is a little bit weaker than its non um, glow counterpart. So if you were looking for something super hardy, I might lean towards the non glow version of that Tetra or Tiger Barb or Rainbow Shark. Uh, but. I do understand the appeal, maybe getting uh, someone specific into the hobby that likes that look, and you might be using some actinic lighting to really make them pop um, in color. And so you might, might, not, might not be doing live plants. You might have artificial decorations that look really nice. It's just a different theme. It, it's just counter to what we typically do, and that is the planted aquarium. So, uh, But I recognize a lot of people love it. Next up, I've got for you the fancy goldfish. This is really, I've done it in the past, my wife's done it. It works out to be pretty well. You pick out one fancy goldfish that's kind of that shorter body, chunky monkey, and it can live for a very long time in there, assuming you keep up with the water changes. As that thing gets bigger and bolder, more water changes, and you'll probably at some point upgrade its tank size if you're really enjoying that fish. Uh, tank mates, I don't recommend a whole lot. The one I do, if you are going to do it, is a dojo loach. Um, that dojo loach, it does get pretty hefty long term, but just those two fish and heavy water changes usually will get you through that. You can do a little bit of plants like anubiuses and java ferns and, and things like that, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't go ahead and like do a full planet tank and be dosing lots of fertilizer because you're going to do a lot of water changes and the fish make a lot of waste, which helps feed those plants. So in that case, I say use the plants to clean up some of the waste and make the plants not the feature. The fish are the feature and the plants are helping the fish be better, where a lot of times in our planted aquariums, the plants are the feature and the fish accentuate the plants. It's the opposite in this relationship. Um, and so, yeah, 29 gallon, 30 gallon, bare minimum size that I like to do one in. Uh, from there, you go up to a 40 or a 55 if you're going to add more fish. And it's real tempting to get friends and all of that, but know that your little goldfish today gets pretty big long term. And while we all have best intentions to maybe have an 800 gallon filled with goldfish behind you, maybe you don't get that point next year or the year after. And so I try to plan, could this live here for a very, very long time and give me maximum time because my car just broke down and then my furnace just broke and I keep meaning to get at the bigger aquarium, but I just can't try to avoid that situation. All right, well, that's my five ideas I've got for you to get you started on your 29 to 30 gallon aquarium. If you want more ideas, Check out our 10 gallon videos, our 20 gallon videos. Anything that's meant for a smaller aquarium can also be upsized. Not everything meant for bigger can be downsized though. So you can imagine if you have a fish this big, can't go into a tank this small. But if you have fish this big, could go into a tank this big, right? So, you know, you can link, uh, look at the links down below in the description. You can sign up for our blog, which our blog puts out a weekly uh, newsletter, essentially with an educational article about something with the freshwater fish hobby every single week, well-written, well-crafted to help people like you and I just get better in the hobby. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.